Welcome to this year's Staff Excellence Award Ceremony. My name is Ali Ford, probably best known for playing Dimpna in the long-running BBC sitcom Give My Head Peace. Last year, I had the pleasure of hosting the awards ceremony in a gloriously packed Whitlaw Hall, and I'm truly delighted to be asked back again this year. Of course, this year's awards ceremony is a bit different, but then everything over the last year has been a bit different. But the one thing that hasn't changed is the fantastic work that Queen's staff do. And that's what we're celebrating through this year's Staff Excellence Awards. So today is all about celebrating you and the initiatives, projects and work that you were involved in during the last academic year. Although, sadly, we can't celebrate in person together this afternoon, I hope that you will enjoy today's virtual event and will encourage you to connect on social media using the hashtag LoveQUBStaff. So, to get this afternoon started, let's take a look at some of your achievements over the last year. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maria Regan. I'm a member of Senate and chair of the Staff Excellence Awards judging panel. This is the fifth year of the awards, which recognise and reward the achievements of staff right across the university. What makes the awards so special is that any member of staff or student can nominate. And this year, we received our highest ever number of nominations, over 310. Although COVID has dominated much of our lives and work over the past year, it was lovely to see nominations that reflected the full breadth of activity that staff have been involved in during the academic year. Throughout the judging process, we saw time and time again examples of best practice taking place across the university, from education and research through to community impact and student support. Given the many outstanding and deserving nominations, it really was a challenge for the panel to come up with our shortlist. I would like to thank panel members for the time and effort they put into the process, particularly given the volume of nominations and the fact that all the judging had to take place virtually. But I hope you will all agree that we have a worthy shortlist of 31 individuals and teams who are making a significant impact on students, the university and wider society. Thank you for joining us today and it's now time to find out who the winners are. 
Our first category is Delivering Excellence. This award recognises an individual who goes above and beyond, consistently delivering excellence and taking pride in what they do. Here is the shortlist. Dr. Tara Brooks. Tara is Programme Director for the MSc in Building Information Modelling Project Management and acts as a role model for women in construction. She was nominated for this year's awards for the impact she has made on the educational experience, widening access and for her support for students. Susan Burton. Susan is a finance clerk in the School of Law who was nominated by several academic colleagues for the critical role she plays in facilitating research within the school. Described as an unsung hero and the backbone of the school's research work, she consistently goes above and beyond to support staff and students. Tim Crawford. As a learning development tutor, Tim supports students to reach their academic potential. During the year, he developed and implemented a number of new initiatives to support the retention and progression of students coming to Queen's from a widening participation background. Dr. Thomas Field. Tom is a dedicated lecturer in the School of Maths and Physics who received multiple nominations for his commitment to teaching and for going the extra mile to support students. From volunteering with international students to supporting student society events, his impact is felt across the entire school community. Dr. Tim Fosker. As a lecturer and disability advisor within the School of Psychology, Tim has had a significant impact on the well-being, retention and achievement of students with disabilities. As well as providing individual support, Tim has been an outstanding advocate for students with disabilities. Dr. Alison McKenzie. Alison is a senior lecturer in the School of Social Sciences, Education and Social Work, who was nominated by her students for her positivity, support and unwavering compassion. This year in particular, she went above and beyond to ensure her students received the guidance, support and encouragement needed to complete their dissertations. Dr. Kenneth Smith. Ken is a software developer and critical member of the Astrophysics Research Centre. He was nominated for his dedication, work ethic and willingness to help postgraduate students and junior staff with their high-level technical and coding problems. And the winner for delivering excellence is... Dr Tim Fosker. Congratulations, Tim. I can't imagine a more deserved award. This award recognises the incredible contribution that you've made to the school as Disability Officer. And I'm really delighted that not only have your colleagues in the school felt that you deserve this award, but also so have a number of students nominated you. I think that's testament to the immense dedication and care and concern that you've given to the role over the last year. You've really made sure that our students with disabilities have had their voices heard and have felt supported. And this has been really invaluable in ensuring that they've been able to progress with their studies. Thank you so much and well done. Our next category is Community Impact. This award recognises the significant contribution Queen's staff make to the local community and wider society. The award was open both to individuals and teams. Here's the shortlist. Dr. Anne Campbell. Anne is a senior lecturer in the School of Social Sciences, Education and Social Work and has made a significant impact on society through her expert contributions to drug using and drug treatment. 
from her teaching and research to informing policy and working in the community during the pandemic, she has augmented what we know about drugs and alcohol treatment and practice in Northern Ireland and the UK. COVID Consortium Support Team. Julia Miskelly, Joanna Mulholland and Gillian Riddell from the Faculty of Medicine, Health and Life Sciences have made a significant impact in Northern Ireland by supporting the rollout of coronavirus testing. They have provided vital support and coordination to the NI COVID-19 Testing Scientific Advisory Consortium, which was formed by Queen's to help expand the testing capacity of the regional virus lab. Dementia Awareness Game Project Team. Christine Brown-Wilson, Gary Mitchell and Gillian Carter have worked with community members living with dementia to design and develop a digital game to raise awareness about dementia for the general public. Having shown to improve attitudes to dementia, the game has since been played over 3,000 times and has been integrated into the nursing curriculum at Queen's. The Pathway Opportunity Programme Team the Pathway Opportunity Programme has made a significant and positive impact on the lives of young people from disadvantaged backgrounds by supporting and encouraging them to come and study at Queen's. Thanks to the work of the team, which includes more than 30 staff from across the university, over 450 young people engaged with the programme during the academic year. And the winner for Community Impact is... Dr. Anne Campbell. Congratulations, Dr. Campbell. Your expert contributions to drug using and drug treatment, both at a community level and collectively via regional and international research partnerships are so deserving of an award of excellence. One of the numerous examples of Anne's passion for community engagement is volunteering for Extern Street Injectors Project, working with rough sleepers and other homeless persons who have complex drug and alcohol problems. Over the past year, Anne's been working 12-hour shifts at the weekend, giving harm reduction advice, obtaining night placements, retrieving needles from known needle drop areas, and administering naloxone packs. At a structural level, Anne's work is globally renowned. As a member of the UK Government Home Office Committee, the Advisory Council on the Misuse of Drugs, authoring and co-authoring innumerable reports on the social harms of drug use, Anne is now a leading commentator and expert in the formulation of UK government drug policy. Despite all this, I've no doubt that Anne's humility will want the spotlight to be firmly focused on the hard work of the CIS team in Extern, ASSERT and the regional service users networks, to name but a few. Anne, for many years you've inspired me. As a former supervisor, now as a colleague and as a friend. Well done, Anne. Our next award is for innovation. This award recognises an individual or team who has developed an innovative idea or new way of working that has benefited a particular department, the university or wider society. Here is the shortlist. Act wisely. This team in the School of Medicine, Dentistry and Biomedical Sciences developed an innovative system which supports final year medical students in enhancing their prescribing skills as they prepare to enter the workforce, with a focus on learning to act wisely and safely by collaborating with patients, doctors, nurses and other health professionals. Careers, Employability and Skills GradFest 2020 Project Team 
With the cancellation of the 2020 NI Graduate Recruitment Fair, the team in Academic and Student Affairs Directorate developed an innovative virtual solution that made a real difference to final year students. The team created a two-day virtual event and associated microsite which provided students with a range of support, advice and opportunities. Dr. David Cutting David is a lecturer in the School of Electronics, Electrical Engineering and Computer Science who has improved the student experience through a range of creative practices and his ability to drive change. Over the past year, he has taken an innovative approach to both resolving problems and embracing opportunities through initiatives such as the Global Coders Project. Domestic Recruitment and Events During lockdown, the DRE team had to come up with a new way of communicating with prospective students at a crucial time in the recruitment cycle. They developed a new digital interface to house all critical information and created a number of virtual events to engage with prospective students. Triple E CS PGT Team This team created an online PG certificate in software development to reskill individuals adversely affected by COVID-19. The ambitious four-month course was created in just four weeks and received over 700 applications. The course was so successful that it is now recognised as a role model for other PG certificates and online teaching and prompted the promotion of a further number of PG certificate programmes at Queen's. 14 Chrono Ramped Pyroxidation Lab this team in the School of Natural and Built Environment discovered that a system intended to provide information on source of carbon in lake and ocean sediments could have wider applications. They demonstrated its application for the radiocarbon dating of buildings constructed with lime mortar and the dating of preserved artefacts, representing a significant breakthrough in this field. And the winner for innovation is the Triple ECS PGT team. I would like to congratulate the Triple ECS PGT team. In this most challenging year, this team has displayed all the values that this university holds so dear. The team recognised that many people faced a threat to their careers and livelihoods due to COVID-19. And they responded to this by developing an online PG cert in software development that could be completed over a condensed period four months over the summer, and this enabled progression to a full MSc in the next academic year. This was a complex piece of work and required many interventions. If I could just highlight one, the team worked with admissions to process over 700 applications for the places on this course. These were processed in one week, with aptitude testing all done in one day, and this enabled the course offers to be expedited. This was a very intense piece of work and under a lot of time pressure. Personally, I'd like to thank the team for the extraordinary efforts that they have undertaken with regard to the PG Cert in software development. I could not be more proud of their contributions to QUB and to Northern Ireland society. Their activities have directly changed people's lives. Next up is our team of the year. This award is all about collaboration and recognises a group of individuals who, by working together, have made a significant and positive impact. Here is the shortlist. Estate Services Pandemic Support Team. This team is made up of members of the estate's cleaning operation who worked on campus throughout lockdown to support staff involved in vital research and teaching. As well as cleaning research labs and washroom facilities, they fully disinfected 146 buildings, enabling staff and students to return to campus. Queen's Accommodation. Throughout the academic year, staff in Queen's Accommodation have provided extensive support to students living there. 
During various lockdowns, they have remained on campus to support all residents, both in student and staff and family accommodation, providing a safe and secure home for all. Queen's COVID-19 Virology Team. Since the start of the pandemic, Alton Power, Connor Bamford and Lindsay Broadbent have all played an important role in helping improve public understanding of COVID. As well as making over 1,500 national and international media appearances, providing a clear and balanced commentary, they are leading Queen's research efforts on COVID-19 and have secured over £2 million in funding. I'm sure you'll agree that those shortlisted teams have all played a massive part during the year to the university's response to COVID. Because of their significant contributions, the judging panel has decided to award this year's Staff Excellence Award to all three teams in recognition of their very different but critical contributions to the university's COVID response. Queen's Accommodation. Good afternoon. Firstly, can I say congratulations to everybody who's been nominated for an award, uh, and especially the student accommodation team who have been recognised. You guys really do deserve this. In March last year, when most of the university community moved to work from home, accommodation was one of the areas where for the vast majority of people that just wasn't an option. We had a team of about 70 people who've been on campus every day throughout the last year looking after around 1,200 students um, who couldn't go home and who, like the rest of us, uh, were uncertain, anxious uh, and unsure about what lay ahead. So the accommodation team really, really did pull together. They did whatever jobs were needed and, for me, really embodied the true meaning of teamwork, collaboration, resilience and showed how much they cared, not just about students but about each other. At a time when we depended on them, this team, in my view, showed great strength of character, integrity. They were really positive and enthusiastic, but above all, they put the needs of our students first. So they're true ambassadors for the university, and I'm delighted that they have been recognised with this award. Thank you. Queen's COVID-19 Virology Team. Congratulations to Lindsay, Connor and Ultan, three virologists of the Welcome Wilson Institute for Experimental Medicine for their work during COVID-19 pandemic, dissecting how the virus infects our cells and researching new treatments, but also for their outstanding work informing the general public about the disease in Northern Ireland and global. Estate Services Pandemic Support Team. Hi there, um, congratulations for winning Team of the Year. Absolutely delighted for you. It's great that in this year of, of COVID and, and everything else that's went on, that the panel have recognised just for the work that you do. Um, it's amazing the way that you stepped up um, whenever everybody else went home to keep themselves safe, that we continued on through um, disinfecting everywhere. We are in every building, um, every office, every room, every day, making sure that the place is as safe as it can be for when everybody returns to work. And... Um, as I say, enjoy your day, make the most of it, really well deserved. Congratulations again. The next category is Outstanding Leadership. This award recognises an individual who has demonstrated outstanding leadership during the academic year. Here is the shortlist. <music> Professor Donna Fitzsimons. As head of the School of Nursing and Midwifery, Donna has provided supportive and inspirational leadership to create a collegial environment within the school. When faced with the challenges of the pandemic, Donna led by example, remaining positive under pressure, developing and supporting staff and working tirelessly in service of the school, its students and Northern Ireland's healthcare services. Ted Jensen. Ted is the driving force behind the Pathway Opportunity Programme, successfully leading its development and expansion and coordinating its transition online during the pandemic.
During this year, the number of students enrolled in the program increased to 245, with the numbers of subjects on offer also expanding. Dr. Sarah Lappin. Sarah's exceptional leadership has helped to steer the architecture discipline through a challenging year. With her honest, enthusiastic and calm manner, she has provided consistent support to staff and students, and under her leadership, architecture has excelled and is now sixth in the Guardian League table. Professor Ken Mills. Ken leads the Blood Cancer Research Group within the Patrick G. Johnson Centre for Cancer Research and has demonstrated outstanding leadership on many fronts, including leading the technical review within the School of Medicine, Dentistry and Biomedical Sciences and his mentorship of junior academics, postdocs and students. Professor Karen Rafferty. Karen's inspirational leadership of the School of Electronics, Electrical Engineering and Computer Science has helped to build and enhance the culture. Despite the challenges of the past year, the school is a vibrant and innovative community where staff are supported in their teaching, learning and research and sustainability activities. And the winner is... Professor Donna Fitzsimons. Hello everyone, on behalf of myself and a number of others who nominated Donna, which is in itself testament to the high regard in which she is held, I would like to congratulate Donna on her success. She has led the School of Nursing and Midwifery through one of its most difficult periods, three new curricula approved, moved to online learning, and last but not least, reacting to the demands of COVID-19. Donna has led the school team with calmness, empathy and courage and has always put students and staff to the forefront of everything. This is a very well-deserved honour, so congratulations Donna, a remarkable lady for remarkable times. Well done. Our final category is for Lifetime Achievement. This award recognises and celebrates the contribution made by a long-serving member of staff to the university. Here is the shortlist. Patrick Brannigan. Paddy is a member of staff in IS and has worked at Queen's for 41 years, delivering consultancy and training and facilitating the embedding of technology and change management initiatives. He has been an active member of various staff networks and groups throughout his career and is known widely across the university as a highly professional and approachable colleague. Kathy Carey. Kathy has worked at Queen's for almost 20 years, during which time her diligent efforts have played a key role in the university's success in progressing the Queen's Gender Initiative agenda. Her dedicated service to gender equality work, mostly behind the scenes, has impacted many colleagues at Queen's, and she has played a pivotal role in the university's continued success in the Athena Swan programme. Pauline Daniels. Pauline has been a valued member of staff within the School of Nursing and Midwifery since 2002 and has made a positive impact on the experience of students and colleagues. She has been a beacon of support for adult nursing and a role model for students pursuing a career in this field of nursing. Professor Hastings Donnan. Having joined Queen's in 1979, Hastings has made a career-long contribution to peace building, conflict transformation and social justice internationally. Now director at the Senator George J. Mitchell Institute for Global Peace, Security and Justice, he has published over 20 books and lectured worldwide and his scholarship has been recognised through membership of a number of learned societies. Professor Tony Gallagher. A leading academic in the field of education, Tony's contribution to Queen's has spanned almost 30 years, during which time he has changed the lives of young people in cities and countries divided by conflict.
continually championing the work of others and promoting the impact of the university, his work in shared education was recognised in 2020 with a prestigious Queen's Anniversary Prize. David McQuaid. David is Chief Technician in the School of Pharmacy and has made a significant contribution to the university, healthcare and the pharmaceutical industry during his 42-year career. Endlessly energetic, resourceful and supportive to staff and students, he leads by example and is a great role model. And the winner is... Paddy Brannigan. I first met Paddy in 1993 and his enthusiasm for the university and positive can-do attitude came through from day one. And I'm very happy to say that 28 years later, his wit and personality are still shining through and his love for the university has not been diminished. Paddy has been a great friend and a colleague and also a great ambassador for information services across the university and beyond. And every door was always open to Paddy, including many coffee shops doors, but we won't dwell on that. But if you ever needed Paddy to help, he was always there and his guidance and support over the years has been invaluable. Paddy, congratulations and good luck in the future. Congratulations, Paddy. You deserve this. It's been a pleasure to work with you. I've really fond memories of working with you back when I started at Queen's. Um, we, um, it was a great team. It was very demanding, but really, really encouraging and really supportive. Paddy has made an extensive contribution in the hinterland of the local community. His contribution in the voluntary housing sector and in community choirs has been outstanding. And in all cases, people were aware that he was from Queen's and his value added to that community reflected back on Queen's. Paddy, congratulations on, on the nomination. It's been a pleasure working with you over, over so many years. And your obvious love for Queen's, your commitment to staff and students is apparent every day and virtually everything you do. Um, hopefully you can get together for lunch soon. You can pack up the house and put your feet in the kitchen table um, as per normal. And we maybe see you soon. Congratulations, Paddy. Banish to Rogus Far Den Scotter Fad, Nivea Lehe Jury Sean, Le Mas to Hara Una. Paddy, I just want to say a big thank you for all your work guidance and support over the years, and also a massive thanks for being such a good friend. Congratulations, Paddy. I am delighted for you. You're a legend in Queen's. I'm delighted to be here at today's virtual awards ceremony. I'd like to congratulate all those nominated, shortlisted, and of course, our winners. Given the number of nominations, which were incredibly strong, it's a tremendous achievement to be shortlisted. You should all be very proud. The Staff Excellence Awards were established to recognise the achievements of staff across the university, so it's important that the winners are decided by staff and students themselves. I would like to thank the staff and student members of the judging panel, chaired so well by Mairead Reagan, for making the difficult decisions about today's winners. In addition to our six category award winners that have just been announced, there is an additional award that I would like to present today. It's called the I Care Award. The purpose of this award is to recognise a member of staff who reflects all of our core values. This year, the panel has decided to recognise a member of staff who made a significant and sustained contribution to the life of our university. This year's recipient is Una Reid. Una sadly passed away in June 2020, having worked at Queen's for almost 20 years as head of Eventus and more recently, Head of Domestic Recruitment and Events. A much-loved member of the Queen's family, Una was renowned for her professionalism, her commitment, her charisma and her sense of humour. Una made a lasting impact on this university, a university she was very proud to work in. We miss her invaluable contribution and her fellowship enormously. We believe that the iCare Award represents who Una was as a person, and we hope that you'll agree it's an appropriate acknowledgement of her contribution to Queen's. Last summer, we were all desperately saddened to lose our dear colleague, Una Reid. Una joined Queen's almost 20 years ago as head of Aventus, and more recently, she was head of domestic recruitment and events. As a former pro-chancellor and chair of Senate, I was fortunate to work very closely with Una for many years 
especially around graduation. So when I learned that she was to receive this year's Eye Care Award, I was absolutely delighted because no one has personified the Queen's values that it represents more than in a read. She connected with people at every level and she was just as comfortable welcoming heads of state or royalty as she was in ensuring that all our students and their families had a wonderful experience at graduation. Una's warmth and sense of humour were legendary, as was her commitment to excellence in everything she did. There's a real sadness about the fact that Una's not here today, but this I Care Award for her family and her friends is a fitting and meaningful tribute for a very special and much missed colleague. We all know that Una was renowned for her event management. Whenever I did an event with Una, she always gave me very clear instructions, which made my job easier and made the event run perfectly. When it came to running orders, she always said that whoever opens an event has to close it. So in true Una style, I'll do what I'm told as VC and now hand back to Ali. Thank you. And so this brings us to the end of this year's Staff Excellence Awards Ceremony. I've missed being amongst you all today and helping celebrate your achievements, but thank you for watching and I hope you have enjoyed it. Congratulations again to all the winners and staff shortlisted and nominated. Well done.